Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and uh, where we have a brick and mortar shop in Tucson, Arizona, and of course, OldPuebloCoin.com. Uh, this is a multiple box opening for PCGS, and we actually have a couple of crackouts that we're going to handle here. Those are going to be for the end of the show. Get some popcorn because this is um, multiple boxes that I just decided I'm just going to make one video. Also, uh, some of you may remember the mail order video that was done a while back. And so I've got a couple of coins there that you're going to want to look at. That's going to come down the road. Uh, but let's kick it off with a lovely $10 gold piece. Uh, also in this group, I happen to have a pretty large quantity of dollars that were in the video I made back, I think it came out in September, about uh, old toners and old holders and what it looks like. And so a number of coins from that video we sent in. Some because they're nice, some just because, and uh, that'll be kind of fun to see. So $10 libs in general, um, just in the marketplace, kind of only worth getting certified or spending the money on it, usually if you can get something in a 63 or higher grade, uh, of course, unless you've just owned the coin forever and you just want to get in a holder. MS63, uh, current market value on a coin like that is probably somewhere in that $1,500 range. Uh, but, you know, we're going to just rock and roll through these because I feel like there's a whole lot. There's a big old stack of coins here for me to... Oh, I'm about to drop them. Look at that. Well, I was just going to show you, like, if you put them all together, you know, they actually take up a lot of space. Uh, I got them stacked up here. And we're going to have fun. So this 1822, you guys can tell me what your grade is on this bad boy here. 18, 20, and 2. Some of my favorite dates are these ones from the 20s with the, like, Tim Burton-style 2s. I mean, come on now. Those are cool. Maybe Tim Burton collects coins. It's a whole series i got to work on. Uh, nice coin. You know, no, no, no luster. Uh, heavy wear throughout, but also heavy detail. Heavy wear, heavy detail means it's a probably a VF coin. It is a VF coin. Cleanid, my friends, and um, you know, once again, I should probably point out the things that uh, go right, like that ten dollar gold piece we just looked at, so that I can say, "Come on, man!" Like, so I'll I'll, I'll have another I'll have another coin or two to compare this to. I'm going to set this guy here where I have quick access to him because we need to talk a little bit more about. When a coin is cleaned and when it is not cleaned, uh, that coin is not that expensive cleaned, uh, you know, and, and I don't know exactly what we're going to ask for that. But we're going to move on to a coin that has clearly some more detail to it. 1837, a little bit tougher date and higher grade. Look at the curly cues in the hair, how much detail is left on that thing. Uh, just really, really a nice example. And uh, touch of luster in the corners, but not much. So this is a, one of the most unique looking coins. It actually has completely different lettering than almost all the other uh, all the other half dollars from the same time period. So um, I think it was at a two year type. And so everything is just slightly different than you would see on the dates around it. But this is a really broken up dies. I mean, you can just see portions of the lettering is just kind of really thin up at the top of the coin here. But uh, a nice AU53 on that coin. And, you know, you do have a couple of spots on there that um, somebody left on there. So they didn't bother trying to clean it because we're going to talk about cleaned half dollars. Clean coins that are 150, 175 years old. Uh, it's a thing. 180 years old, however old it is. This is... Uh, I don't know, this is a five or $600 coin, I think, in an AU holder. That's pretty tough, pretty tough, pretty tough guy. This coin was not in, was not in the album full of coins that uh, the old Whitman albums that we went through. This is an 84S, and, you know, we like to see really strong luster, uh, you know, on a coin like that to try to get it to the almost uncirculated grade. 84s's are very difficult to get once you get into like a nice AU grade, especially coins that are original and not not cleaned. 
uh, AU50 and overall a nice looking coin, a nice grade. So the big open fields have little to no luster left on the obverse of the coin, but most of your detail is still there. That's kind of a, a metric to look for on AU coins. You're going to have some luster left. Uh, you know, if someone didn't know, like if you had no shot of luster and someone didn't know any better, like if you just blank out the luster with a look like that, you'd look, oh man, there's no wear on that coin, right? And so that's the type of coin that is going to be uh, in that AU, low, low AU range when it looks like there's no wear, but then it also looks like there's very little luster once you get to the luster angle. Uh, that guy, I think those traded at the $400 range. All right, number of coins coming back. If you didn't watch that video, you should click on it, but a lot of you watched it because people love old albums. And so they had some pretty wild toning. 78 S is the first year on the Morgan's uh, 78. This one's actually the Philly. But the 7, 1878, there is a bazillion uh, different types on these guys. And this coin had um, a little, just a touch of a proof-like finish to the back but just had all kinds of different modeled uh, color to it. And lots of different toning and just kind of sporadically splashed on the back. This is like in when an elephant paints a painting and people pay millions of dollars for it. Only it's a common coin in MS-62. And uh, you know, I mean, it's actually the eight tail feather, so it's not the most common type. That's actually a three or $400 coin. But uh, the eight tail feathers, uh, count them with me if you will. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can still count. Uh, but by the end of the video, I won't be able to. So, all right. Next up, this funky 1879. Now, mind you, the coins in this uh, series that I'm showing you were sent in on two different, um, two or three actually, you know, multiple uh in multiple packages and so they actually had different uh, I assume they probably had different graders look at them they came back at slightly different times so this was sent in on the economy scale 1879 Philly AU 58 um, and a part of the reason we sent these in of course was because of all the funky toning and that was a lot of the topic of the video and so we were just looking at how the toning was coming back and how it was affected uh, when when it was kept in those Whitman albums for a long time. In fact, this 84S was actually also in that album. It was actually in the holder where it said 85CC. And so this coin, if you remember the 84S we just looked at, this coin has, I think, a little bit more wear. So you start to see wear, wear patterns like above the eye and the ear, then the hairline, that's the actual wear flatness versus just breaking the luster up. So XF45. And uh, actually a pretty cool coin. So a couple of these we may just throw on eBay and, and let the tone toner guys chase them down um, just because they're kind of fun. And it's hard for me to really necessarily put a price point on some of the tone stuff anymore. It used to be like you just add whatever Oh, like three dollars <laughs> but you used to not add a whole lot to those suckers and they would uh they would be good to go nobody was too worried about it yeah, so all right so this one's interesting because it's 89.0 uh this i uh was definitely on the more expensive service this was not in the same box as that last coin but this is from the same album and you can see the toning is almost identical on a lot of these coins. And so that was one of the things about the, the video in general was to just talk about, hey, you know, what does stuff look like when it's actually coming straight out of albums and old collections? Um, and this is just kind of fun and funky. Fun, funky, fresh, and AU details questionable color. Um, so interesting, of course, we got a QC out of one of these coins that uh, was in the same group as the other ones. But overall, you know, the other coins that I thought looked a lot more funky with the coloring, they just said, yeah, that's that's good. Also, um, you know, they're calling this AU details. Um, if it's an AU, it's what you call a slider, which means it basically shows as an unk. 
um, you know the coin doesn't really have what you'd call a typical wear pattern to it but fun coin I'm probably gonna price that for now I'll price it you know I'm not gonna price it as questionable color we're gonna price it as a straight grade um, on that guy and then uh, not worry about it too much for now and then if nobody likes it then you know we'll figure something else figure something else out this um, the 89 known by the way that's that's a 250 300 coin that's a tough date on those guys uh, this guy here the 1891 so there are a lot of Philly mints uh, that are pretty stinking tough to get in high grade and this coin has some pretty rainbow toning kind of tucked in there around the edges uh, kind of dark over the front you know if you just look at that forward facing view but the lust around the edges is really pretty MS-63, that's a good grade on this coin. That's a tough coin. Uh, this is a coin that uh, pops a lot in 64. I mean, this is, you know, maybe a $250 coin as is, but it's over 500, one grade up. So tough, tough coin on that guy. I'm going to just keep on. I got to remember to keep leaving some space for myself for uh, some fun stuff coming up here. Uh, the 92S, I got two 92Ss, so we can have fun with these guys. We could compare grades real quick and just see what we're looking at. Um, you know, both coins are well worn. And you're not seeing any luster on this bad boy on the left, like we talked about previously. Uh, lots of detail, no luster. Probably going to put you in that VF range, VF 30. Uh, nice coin. You know, these are pretty tough to get, uh, two $300 type coins. Uh, this bad boy here, you've got a little bit of luster left on him, so you can start to see a little bit closer on the details here, uh, the little bit of luster that's kicking around. A little bit harder to see, you want to see a little bit more on the periphery, but lots of flat points, so if compared to that uh, 84S we were looking at earlier, you see those flat points over the eye and the, ha and the hair. Uh, XF detail is cleaned. So this is going to get me in back on my cleaning tirade. Um, you know, for me, I like to see a coin. There's coins that I just know are cleaned. And there's there's nothing more frustrating to me than when I see a coin that's been cleaned and it gets a straight grade. And then I have coins like these two here that are marked cleaned. Oh, by the way, VAM2, double date. Better, uh, better variety, I believe, on this guy. Also, not going to get the footage. Um you know this is just one of those times in life where I'm giving up but um, I'm gonna just show you a couple angles here y'all can freeze frame freeze frame and pull up the variety on on a website that shows those varieties and then you'll you'll know all right this 94 oh I don't believe was in that album although it looks like it's got a very original album look to it uh, one of the difficulties you run into with grading anything is just once again knowing what type of strike the coin originally had. Um, you know, a lot of these O mints are tough. You can see just a skosh of uh, luster and through the In God We Trust there. Um, basically, the luster is worn off of the front half. Um, VF35. Uh, nice looking coin. Um, good grade, solid grade. Once again, just talking about overall originality nice gray tone to it doesn't have anything funky going on there uh, 94 o that is you know maybe a hundred dollar coin all right well this guy was fun okay so this was this was in the album and uh, I take on good word from proper authorities that actually 1902 Phillies are a tough date to get toned um, you know there's actually guys who only collect monster toning but there's other guys who actually collect toning by date and mint mark which is a whole different beast. Like they can tell you right away. Um, and O2s are tough because they're, they're hard. O2 Phillies, like we're talking about some of those Phillies get hard and higher grades. Uh, you know, so this guy is kind of a combo coin because it's a tougher grade. Um, and it's got the toning on the reverse I find to be very appealing overall. Even though it's mostly blue, it goes to the purple haze in the middle, and then you've got a little bit of the violent uh, orange on the edge, little lemony colors, whatever that is. 
That's right, I can't tell my basic uh, primary colors apart. So, having said that, probably a three or $400 coin. I don't know what the toning, who knows what it'll kick up to. We'll find out here in a little bit. This guy was in the back of the album. Look at, look at this guy, I gotta tell you. 1921 Morgans, um, they come ugly. I'm just gonna say it out loud, you heard me right. Uh, they just, they're not an attractive looking coin. The reworking of the dies, just kind of flat. Uh, this coin is one of the few 21s I've had that I find to be somewhat attractive. Um, you know, it definitely has a really strong amount of, I'm, I'm looking especially in front of the face on that coin, and it just has a really a brilliance to it, which is, which is nice. Uh, MS64 Plus. Once again, I mean, maybe maybe this one ends up on eBay, I don't know, um, just because it's kind of a cute coin and has a little bit of character to it. So you got a couple marks on the cheek that keep it from a higher grade, a little mark in front of the chin. But the reason those fields look so glossy is that they're really very unblemished uh, in very original. And they've got weird toning to it. Like at one angle, it's almost white, and then you, you get the, the uh, just the different little colors that's right we already established i don't know my colors so going back to kindergarten <laughs> sorry mrs moeller all right so this guy i pulled in the video that i did i actually pulled i said i was going to pull this coin just to see if it would get artificial toning or not and so which is funny because so far all of the toning has come back straight except for that uh what was it the 89 ohm and this is a 23s mint marks on here are impossible to see because you know they keep making them smaller every year that goes by. There's the S. It's bad enough that everyone thinks the 23 is a 28. But um, straight graded, sort of, cleaned. Okay, well, so like on this coin, and in that video we talked about how you can look at uh, how some of the coins that definitely look cleaned toned over really well compared to the ones that looked original. And it's just kind of a little thing. Either they're the coins that were looked like unk coins toned over but coins that looked like they were just circulated didn't look like they were going to tone over uh, i'm not mad at this you know i can i can kind of understand like there's a real high brightness level to this coin underneath the tone uh that i can pick up and i can i can kind of understand uh but having said that the next coin this is the one that was like well, i don't want to say frustrating but this is one that I I wanted to not have to do anything to this coin because I just really liked the way it looked. Um, I really liked just the sham wow. I just like the look of the coin. Now PCGS, Unk Details Residue, that's a coin I'm probably going to have to get conserved. There's a spot, I think what they're showing for the residue uh there's a spot right there and you can see it when the rest of the coin is really brilliant over here and then the and then it just kind of goes dull as the light goes through it so um just one way to spot that type of thing is turning the coin at different angles all right so that that's the dollar blitz now we're gonna that's take half time go get your popcorn come right back okay here we are we're back thanks for the break um and so uh the quarter rule almost all these quarters you got to get them in like 67 or higher to really have them pan out as something that is worth getting certified and uh i'm i'm just i've become like how would i put this cheap enough that i've stopped sending in mid 1940s quarters unless i just you know got them in change or something so like this coin here um this is the type of look i like i used to have when i collected uh, quarters for myself. This is exactly the type of coin that went into my album. They were all raw. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, it's got a shot at a seven, so it's a six. That is always the rule in Washington quarters. Uh, you know, it's still close to a hundred dollar coin, I'd guess, but, but a seven is like four or 500. You know, it's got a huge jump in it and, uh, always, always tough to get. So, uh, I'm not mad at that. I will say that I've got a <laughs> I'm saving my anger and vitriol for a couple of the coins. Just wait, don't worry. Um, once again, here's a coin that um, 
this the engineer snuck in here because it's some type of double die and, and I didn't even look at it but it says double die obverse and uh, I am double die averse so uh, I think this one may have the uh, it may be in the trust but also like the other one I'm not going to try to find it and um, I did manage to go ahead and, and just glance and see uh, with the app. By the way, if you see the, the uh, shield on here, it has a um, sensor in it. And that sensor, you see that, see all that electronics back there? So what happens is if you get the app on your phone and you hold your phone near it, it'll pop up. It'll actually take you right to the coin on their um, website. So it's actually pretty pretty cool piece of technology. Uh, so you can look it up. It'll tell you the pop report. And um, this has uh, interesting pop of 35 with 32 higher. It's probably worth a couple hundred bucks. I think the thing that's weird to me on this coin, if I can say so, is that, you know, can I get a cam? Just not a deep cam. How about just a cam? Is that too much to ask? But um, they got room on there to throw the word cameo. Uh, there's a lot of space up in that blue. You know, that, they got room. All right, so I just got done showing you that quarter and how, like, you know, I'm, I'm not disappointed. I know how it works. I see a lot of coins. And so the thing that stops me in my tracks is when I see a coin that I'm like, okay, I, I know this is, you know, a 1968 Denver Mint. Kennedy. So what I mean by that is it ain't it ain't rare, it ain't scarce, uh, but for me, when I'm looking at getting coins graded or just looking at a coin to hold on to, I'm oftentimes seeing something that is just unique or different. And so when I got this coin in, it was in an album or something. I'm like, dang, you know. So you'll get the special mint set stuff in, and they almost always look nice, but you know, this coin, I thought, that is superb. Just superb. So this is when I get frustrated when I send stuff in. And some of you guys get frustrated at simple things, uh, you know, things much way faster than I do. But like a coin like this, you know, kind of like when you send an 81S Morgan in and it's stunning and you feel like they don't even look at it because they just graded a 63 or 64. So this coin, uh, you know, in my mind, I'm looking at a coin that's a gem coin. I mean, at least give me a six on it, right? Uh, so I, it felt like they didn't look at it for me. I know that's, that's, that's terrible. I shouldn't say things like that. Leading the jury. So because here you come with an SMS coin, the 66, uh, 1966 MSS, you know, and it's coming back. Um, it's coming back at 67 and I'm looking at the two coins like, well, well then, boys and girls. So, you know, anyways, that's it. I, I, like a $5 coin is the thing that I'm upset about. Y'all can worry about your $10,000 coins, but I'm like, this just doesn't make me happy. I like, I know that's 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 why I'm the coin geek. Like you do, you know, you geek out on stuff that's just simple, not complicated. Uh, yeah. All right. I digress. We've got some really cool coins left to look at here. First of all, this 1880 nickel. This is a dangerous coin, y'all, and I want to tell you why it's a dangerous coin. Uh, and we'll take a closer look at a couple things in just a second. This is a dangerous coin because uh, this coin in uh, XF40, this coin in XF40 uh, lists for like $5,000, okay? Uh, and they made 16,000 of them. This, you may have noticed, is a proof. In the proof, which they made 3,955 of, uh, lists for like a fraction of that you know like you can drop a zero and then do something else with the number 
And the problem is, this is the type of thing that unscrupulous folk will take this coin and they will take it out of the holder and they will sell it as an uncirculated coin, uh, a business strike coin instead of a proof coin. Uh, and I will grab a photo for you and show you how I know that this is a proof and not a business strike. All right, so if you look, here is a picture. This is from Heritage of, look at the S's and states, and look especially especially at, you know, this portion, you know, here and here, this little portions that connect to the serifs. That coin is uncirculated. And then we're going to look at how, how tiny the S's are on the proofs, this little point that it comes to up here. This was something that was kind of a telltale sign for me when I was looking at the coin originally. So because I bought the coin as a proof and sent it in as a proof, and you can see on it that it has those real fine lines on the S's, and also even on the T's, the T's are a little fatter up there on the unk, and the proof, the T's are much thinner. So it has some telltale signs, but anyway, just a caveat out there. All right, we got to get rolling here. Let's get to uh, our coins that were mail order coins. This 1880. By the way, you got a set here. Now you got the nickel, and then these actually have the exact same mintage, which I found to be very, very interesting. That they had called a proof 65. Uh, the mail order company, of course, they also charged. Anyone remember that number? What was that number again? They charged 615, oh that's right, $1,615. Pretty close, pretty close, and pretty close, pretty coin. I was really actually very pleased with how this coin turned out. Proof 65, lovely, lovely coin. And what's interesting about this coin, so you've got a pop of 406 with a population of 345 higher graded. So this 1908 Denver Mint Barber Quarter, which they had graded MS64, and it was the, uh, what was it, the low, low price of 800, oh, that's right, $1,875. That coin, which is quite lovely, actually came back the exact same grade they had labeled it. MS64, so kudos to them. Once again, price matters a little bit. Also, here's the thing that's fascinating. These coins both trade in open market in a similar ballpark, $600 range-ish. Population of 400 with 345 higher grade. Population of 61 with 48 finer. So not every state can have someone own an 08D quarter better than 64. Only 48 of the 51 states can. So um, maybe we should just kick a few more states out. All right, last but not least, boys and girls, we do have some crack outs to handle and then we can be on our merry way. I told you I was gonna make you get some popcorn here. My uh, customer, these were for our customer. This Lafayette was AU cleaned and wanted a second opinion on it because they liked they liked the coin overall, and I said, you know, it's it's toned over enough that maybe they don't call it cleaned. Unfortunately, they still called it cleaned. Uh, so kind of a rough result on that. Now this is uh, 76cc, XF details cleaned, and XF45 straight grade. So um, that's a win for them because really, really what you wanna do is have a uh, you know, this coin is worth 100 to $200 more in this holder than it is in this holder. And, you know, this is where we're gonna go full circle on the conversation about cleaning and calling a coin cleaned. Uh, NGC called this coin cleaned, PCGS chose not to. Uh, and uh, I'm not gonna argue with PCGS on not calling it cleaned. And the reason is I agreed with my customer that you know, this is the type of coin, it's got wear, it's bright, but it could have been in someone's pocket. That's just wear. Where did we go wrong with this coin? This, this coin to me is just kind of a silly thing to call cleaned. 
you know, and, and I understand when you look at a coin like this and, and see it's that bright and just say, no, 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 it's clean. And in fact, if you're a collector and you don't like that look, you just pass on the coin, right? And that's the danger of buying coins sight unseen. If you want a coin that has a nice original dark look to it, you know, that's different. If you want a coin with a dark look to it and you want it to be called clean, just send it to me and I'll get it certified for you. So, but in the meantime, that's a win for my customer to get it straight graded. Uh, and uh, so one out of two is definitely not bad. Not bad at all. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.